Ngoi TV, informed economist and business perspective. Good morning. Uh, I will start directly to make my presentation, but before I do that, actually, uh, I should uh, uh, pay word of, uh, I should come with a word of uh, thanks to, to Must for inviting me to be the first uh, public lecturer for this year. Uh, uh, for this year, for this series, I'm not taking this for granted. I know there are quite a number of people who could have been chosen to do this, and uh, in this way, thank you so much. Uh, we have the the, the 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 council chair here, and VC, and all the university management uh, for the trust that we have shown, and I think I will try as much as possible uh, to deliver the lecture to your expectations. I also thank you for. Uh, I'm seeing some of my colleagues here. Of course, uh, uh, with Professor Shumbusho on behalf of Mzumba University. I understand my vice chancellor, uh, Professor Lugano Kusulika, is a member of, uh, of the uh, council here. He's not around. But thank you so much for coming. And I'm seeing quite a number of other colleagues and friends. I see Mrema, I see Mdede, some my, of my students. Now allow me to go straight to the, uh, to the, uh, to the presentation itself. Uh, where now, uh, really it's all about conversation. Uh, my aim is to make a conversation on the industrialization and the role of uh, uh, high learning institutions in this process. So uh, background will be, you know, I'll take you through the history of industrialization in Tanzania since independence, since independence, 1961. But before that, I'll paint a global picture, a global picture for the past 260 years, you know, when industrial revolution started in the US and UK, around 1760 uh, to 1840. Then, of course, I'll zero in into Tanzanian situation from 1961, all the efforts that have been taken up to now. But then major effort will focus on the fifth first government effort of industrialization. And then now the role of uh, higher learning institutions. Why all this history? It's very important so that you understand that exactly what we are doing today, it's not, we are not the first ones. It has been done for the past 260 years plus plus, but also in Tanzanian context, it has been done for the past 58 years or so. And now the question will be uh, uh, making a conversation, a discussion on the role of higher learning institutions. It will be rather critical. Sometimes it will be, have we really played our roles? Because sometimes we have not achieved what we should have, uh, we should have achieved. We have seen some successes. We have seen some failures. Now the question is, to what extent have we played our roles? So I will show the roles that we are supposed to have been playing. I will show the roles some institutions have played. I've made a case study of about eight, I think, ten uh, institutions. And then, but I will also show, you know, what remains to be done. Because really, this is a work in progress. It's a work in progress. So, uh, those are kind of uh, key issues. And, uh, you know, as I've said here, I'll take you through this history. I think I have to skip a little bit here. And, of course, at the end of the day, I'll come to the, you know, way forward. Where do we move from here? This is not a, a lecture on lamentation. It's a lecture on providing solutions. Where we have fallen, we have to stand up. Our greatness does not and should not fall or rather rest in not falling down, but in rising up every time we have fallen. So I'll show areas really where we have messed up as high learning institutions and corrective measures for the better. So, as a, as a background, so that you may know exactly where all this com is coming from, I'm drawing a lot from my own earlier works in this area. As it has been uh, in my introduction, I've done quite a number of studies in this area. Uh, some papers, some newspaper articles, I think almost 27 uh, newspaper articles, eight uh, 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 different um, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 published works, etc. So I'll be drawing from those to inform you. I've been engaged in a number of uh, programs on ITV, TBC, with uh, This Week in Perspective with TMZ, Adam Simbe. But also, uh, I'll have to make it to this, this presentation is being summarized by my own television, Goi TV. Daudi is there. So you'll get it in, in, in clips later, you know, maybe from tomorrow. It has to go to studio to be processed. We, I'm a practicing professor, you know, I'm not only a theoretical, I'm a practicing professor. So, but so some of the work that I've been doing in this area included the work that I did for Sokoi University in the, the uh, keynote paper uh, in the day 2016, which was a work on, um, you know, the role of agriculture in industrialization, uh, detailed work. 
uh, uh, Institute of uh, Rural Development uh, Planning, the Roma Convocation 2016, had a work on the role of planners in industrialization. I'm, I'll be drawing from that. University of Dar es Salaam uh, Social Science has a conference series called The Voice of Social Sciences. I'll be contributing to that debate. I'll also be drawing from there. Uh, then Procurement and Supplies Professionals uh, Institute, there are quite a number of uh, uh, conferences and I've been part of their keynote uh, speaker from 2017. NBA and Mwenga University, etc. But I also draw a lot from the fourth industrial revolution. You know, I, I'll be taking you a little bit on the first industrial revolution that started exactly 260 years, more or less, you know, because if, say, uh, 200, uh, you know, 1,000, uh, the year 1,760 to date, it's almost uh, all those years. So, uh, let's uh, paint a broad picture on uh, industrialization so that we understand exactly what we are talking about. Because at the end of the day, when we are going to task ourselves on the roles that we are supposed to be playing in industrialization, Really, we should understand this space and understand it uh, very well. It's all about the transformation, actually, of societies, of countries, uh, from a basically agrarian economy to industrial economy, to manufacturing. So the concept of industrial, uh, a transformation, a change, you know, uh, from basically uh, agrarian economy to, 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 to now manufacturing. This is exactly what we mean by, by industrialization. And so here we are talking about this extensive um, development, mainly from labor intensive to capital intensive uh, mode of production, where you automate, where you use machinery and equipment, you know, where you move from using, uh, you know, muscles to machinery. This is really the core of industrialization. Because if you do not understand exactly the core of industrialization, we might not be playing a, a fair role, or rather, we may not be playing the role that is expected of us. So it's all about transformation, as I'm saying here. And uh, as I said, uh, we had the first industrial revolution. Now we have four. We, ha we have the first, we have the, th the second, the third. Now we are on the fourth. But now let me take you on the first. Uh, where now it started around 1760, the year 1760, to around 1840. And this took place uh, in the US and UK. So you could see it's a long process, actually, almost 240 years. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this so that we may appreciate uh, it's not the first time that we are doing this. The world has been doing this. Um, Dede, with your seed off, yes, it's a process that uh, it, it has been done. And it's not an event. You know, it's a process. It's not going to be done in a day, but really, after a while, uh, we might be there. So, uh, in this context, again, one should say, why use all our efforts on industrialization? Why is industrialization important? Why should we transform uh, from agriculture to, in, to industrialization, to, in, to industrial sector? What's wrong with remaining agrarian as such? You could see when you compare most of developing countries in the world, those that are industrialized have better uh, development indicators in all aspects, in all aspects. Uh, Mama Zakia, as a former minister for, 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 for economy and finance, you know this. Their GDP, gross domestic product, are better than uh, uh, basically agrarian economies. Uh, their infant mortality rates are lower, uh, their uh, literate rates are higher, their infrastructure, both soft and hard, are better, all kind of stuff. So all development uh, indicators, all the metrics you use, uh, industrial economies are performing better than this part of the world. When it comes to poverty, they escape the poverty much, much earlier. Yeah, they have kissed the goodbye uh, poverty compared with countries that are more agrarian in nature. Why? because of the role of in industrial sector in development. Uh, industrial sector set, you know, stands to provide the higher rates of employment uh, than, agra uh, than uh, uh, agrarian economy. Uh, when it comes to foreign, uh, to foreign uh, currency, uh, industrialization and in Tanzanian context, for example, uh, stands to provide more foreign currency through exports, through exports of industrial goods. But also, and this is something that uh, we have not been talking about a lot. You know, I go through literature. We have not taken agriculture, I mean, uh, industrial sector, as a means of saving foreign currency. If Tanzania industrializes, you stand to save foreign currency that is being used in the imports. And this has a lot of implications, has what you call major and far-reaching implications. If Tanzania industrializes, and industrializes uh, properly, if you do import substitution kind of industrialization, for example, as a result, we stop, we reduce imports, 
in this way, you save foreign currency. And this has a lot to do with uh, our balance of payment. It's a long debate. You know, our balance of payment would improve. When your balance of payment improves, then your months of import support would also increase. Now I think you are talking about uh, four, three, four, five months of import support. Now, if you, if you save more foreign currency, you increase, you know, that, that amount, you know. It has also implication on the strength of the shilling. So you could see industrialization has what you call major and far-reaching implications only on the uh, foreign currency aspect. On the question of jobs, I think it's very clear. Industrialization also, if Tanzania industrializes, it has a lot to do with the provision of raw material to other sectors. We have what we call uh, input-output tables, intersectoral linkages. If you do what we call a, a loan tip table, you know, where industrial sector produces uh, raw materials, for example, agricultural equipment that are going to save uh, uh, industrial uh, agriculture sector, then all other sectors of the economy will be growing. So when we are talking about uh, industrialization, indeed it means industrialization of uh, virtually the whole of economy. So that's why it's very important to use all of effort in here. But also industrial industrialization will help in providing a, a market to other sectors. Agriculture sector, Tanzania is by and large an agrarian economy. So the moment you industrialize, you directly give agricultural sector a lot of market. I think about uh, the uh, you know, agricultural product that's been produced here. And uh, if Tanzania has to, to industrialize, normally it will be uh, agro-processing. Uh, you know, processing agricultural product and stuff. So all this will provide uh, a market. So that's why uh, we, I, I think I do not need to convince you more uh, that really industrialization is the right uh, strategy for Tanzania. And that's why as scholars, as people in high-end institutions, we have a noble role to play, making sure that really, yeah, it, uh, it happens. It was important to have that slide uh, so that we don't take it for granted that, uh, you know, why industrialization? It is very important. Now, as I said, across the globe, we have seen industrialization from 1760 to around 18, uh, 18, 1840s, where we transformed agrarian societies into industrial society. Now in Tanzania, because this is our point of focus, what is the situation? Yes, we are talking about industrialization today, 2019, December 12th, you know, but then what is the journey? For the past uh, 58 years, Tanzania had quite a number of efforts on industrialization. Now, I'll paint the, 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 the picture uh, before I zero in into the fifth phase government. Because uh, the gist of the lecture is the efforts, the strategies, the, uh, the aspirations of the fifth phase government to industrialize. But it's very important to understand that's not the first attempt. We had quite a number of attempts. And I'll take you through some. Uh, some of you with gray hair like me, uh, the Shumbushos of the world, uh, Mama Zakia, the VC, would remember, would remember. Some of you, it's history. But it's very important to paint that history in order to, uh, to, 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 you know, to appreciate the efforts that have been done and to build on the foundation of what has been done already. I will take you through a number of uh, development plans in Tanzania where there have been efforts to industrialize, where we have succeeded where we have seen some failures. And as scholars, we have a role to learn. We have a role to learn. We have to be a learning nation, actually. So, and, uh, you know, there is no other place where learning is more important than higher learning institutions. So, in the first development plan, 1964, uh, we had industrialization strategy. And industrialization of effort was mainly by the private sector. For, remember... We are talking of a country that got a political independence in 1961. So the period between 1961 to mid-19, uh, to around 67 actually, you know, when this country turned 50, I wrote a piece called The Journey of Tanzania for the Past uh, uh, 50 Years. That's when it turned 50. Last Saturday, because on the 9th of uh, December this year, we passed uh, uh, 5th of December this year, we passed uh, uh, 5th of December.